Hi everyone. So today we'll talk about The Monkey and the Monk. This is an abridgment of the Chinese epic, The Journey to the West. I apologize in advance again for my pronunciation and I'll put in a list of my attempted pronounced words. There's only a few of them in this video and um, I hope you enjoy it. So The Monkey and the Monk is attributed to Wu Shengen who lived about 1500 to 1582 CE. This translation on your screen is by Anthony C. Yu. Anthony C. Yu spent 13 years studying and translating this text into a much bigger four volume edition. It's published by the University of Chicago. At the request of his colleagues, he abridged this epic into the single volume and titled it simply The Monkey and the Monk, and that's the one you can see on your screen. Of course, Anthony hopes that readers will be ambitious and try to read the unabridged version whenever possible. Chronicles, this epic chronicles the journey of the ancient priest Xuan Zheng, who lived during the Tang Dynasty. At the defend, defiance of the Emperor Taizong, he left China to travel west in search of Buddhist scriptures. His journey lasted 17 years, from 1627 to 644 CE. He traveled along the Silk Road or through northern China. He looped around and down towards Kashmir into modern-day Pakistan and zigzagged throughout both coastlines of India collecting the scriptures, then back up towards Kashmir and along the route home. He was certainly not the only Chinese Buddhist monk to travel for Buddhist scriptures, but he certainly is one of the most celebrated in China for any historical accomplishments within the book Journey to the West and his translations afterwards. After his return, he spent the next 25 years of his life to translate all the scriptures he found. His feet boasts the largest collection of Buddhist scriptures available in the Chinese language before or since. After he returned to China, his total number of Buddhist scriptures are 75 volumes or 1,341 scrolls. Throughout history, his life became a source of inspiration for stories that were told, so he became a legend that blends facts with fiction. Within this epic, we have the birth of Zheng described in detail. He was born to a very low part of society in the coast region of southeastern China. Since he was so low, Giving him this monumental task shows the compassionate wisdom of Buddha. The details of the monkey's birth and early life are chronicled in great detail as well. He begins as an animal with incredible intelligence right away, though it seems he doesn't know about the extent of it because of all the tricks he does in the beginning. He does quickly rise to become king with followers in his region because of his inherent ability with magic. He trains in the Taoist self-cultivation, becoming even more powerful than before and causing trouble within the stars themselves. He converts to Buddhism and joins Xuanzang in his quest. This monkey is most likely to be the same one that's featured in India's great epics, the Mahabharata, and more specifically, the Ramayana, as the highly beloved Hanuman. Research has discovered more links to Hanuman in Chinese Buddhist scriptures. The five characters who embark on this quest are a reflection of an internal pilgrimage towards moral self-cultivation that regular people can go on. These characters are, of course, the monk himself as the spiritual guide, the monkey, who a half-human, half-pig comedic, who is actually a Taoist god exiled from heaven, a reformed cannibal, who is another Taoist pariah, and a delinquent dragon horse as the priest's transportation. 
of the self, these perhaps can be a symbolic exploration of the higher self or soul within the monk, lower self or mind within the monkey, the self-destructive appetites, the, the conscious knowledge of right and wrong within heaven's marshal, and the physical body within the white dragon horse. In order of the five characters I just listed, the representation within the self that they are, I'll list them. So of the self, perhaps they can be a symbolic exploration of the higher self or soul within the monk, lower self or mind within the monkey character, the self-destructive appetites, the self-conscious knowledge of right and wrong within Heaven's Marshal, and the physical body within the white dragon horse. When reading this, the beginning was my favorite section. Seeing the creation of the world, the brief creation of the world, and the clear number of years that each phase of creation took was amazing. The beginning of the cosmos includes the Chinese zodiac and how each hour is represented by a specific creature. It contains references to ancient Chinese texts, the classic of changes or Yi Ching, and the very ancient Chinese calendar from the Yellow Emperor, which is 2697 to about 2000. 597 BCE. We begin with exploring some Taoist principles and a discussion of fusing Taoism, Confucianism, and Buddhism all together in chapter 2. Like the Mahabharat, there is a lot of discussion on wisdom and a fairly hardy number of characters. The Monkey and the Monk includes a variety of places with a brief history of them with the most colorful names. The journey begins with the monkey and the monk meeting each other and the rest of their party slowly joins while they embark on their quest. There is a lot of action along the way with many supernatural battles occurring. The text frequently breaks into poetry to convey some of the scenes in an elegant way. This beautiful little poem from chapter 8, page 126 in the abridged edition that you see on your screen one wish born in the heart of man is known throughout heaven and earth. If vice or virtue lacks reward, unjust must be the universe. It's a great blend of fantastic adventure story with seemingly endless amounts of wisdom and magic. I certainly at some point want to read the unabridged edition and... I will put in a couple of links to some very helpful websites that can give you a lot more information. Uh, one site explores the journey to the West um, in a little more detail and compares some passages with other ancient traditions around the world. And the second link, it has an academic thesis where Zhang Ke is exploring archetype, archetype and allegory in Journey to the West. Um, he includes thoughts from the works of Joseph Campbell and Carl Jung. And that's all. I hope you enjoyed this and have a great day. Bye, everyone.